What's your biggest fear? What's up, Bumblebee? What's your biggest fear? Comment down below. Mine is space, being lost or trapped in space in any capacity. Welcome back to Bumblebee. Here are the top 10 historical space accidents that shocked the world. Number 10, Soyuz 11. It was April 1971 when the Russians launched the world's first space station. Three cosmonauts aboard said space station. They all spent three weeks observing, conducting experiments, you know, dare I say, normal space station behavior. But their return trip, however, on June 30th, that's when things took a tragic turn. The spacecraft made a normal re-entry and landing but when the ground team opened the hatch up, all three cosmonauts had suffocated. What happened? Well, it turns out a faulty air vent had opened 30 minutes prior when the descent module separated and the cabin had actually depressurized. From that point on, the Soviet and the US space programs would ensure that their astronauts had to wear spacesuits during any phase of any mission where depressurization could possibly occur, just to be safe. I couldn't imagine how scary that would be. Also, just wear this suit all the time. It looks cool, it looks pretty badass. I'd wear the suit at home, are you kidding me? Make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich wearing that thing. I'd walk all slow too. I'd really do it like I was in space. Number nine, Project 1794. This project was created with the goal to build sort of a saucer type aircraft that would be designed to shoot down Soviet you know, attacks. This program was created in the 1950s and it was quite ambitious. It had some pretty, you know, high goals, some Tom Cruise-esque goals. If you've seen Top Gun Maverick, here we go. A team of engineers began trying to build a disc-shaped aircraft, but here's the kicker. They wanted it to be capable of traveling at supersonic speeds at high altitudes. They had to go fast. The documents about this project show that they wanted it to be able to travel at Mach 4, which is four times the speed of sound, and they wanted it to be able to reach an altitude of over 100,000 feet. Yeah, at the time, the project was estimated to cost around $3 million, which is around $26 million today. I acted like I thought of that, but I wrote it down. I couldn't do that math. Are you kidding me? In the end, the project was canceled in 1961 because the craft failed to all these tests and proved to be aerodynamically unstable, which of course would provide a whole slew of problems at a high speed, especially supersonic ones. Again, if you've seen Top Gun Maverick, this is a, a waste, a big waste of money. We didn't, we didn't get it with this one. Number eight, too fast. We're at this stage in life now where Teslas are self-driving people to work and I can't do it. I'm a, I'm a 10 and two guy minimum, at least a 10, you know what I mean? You never know what technology might do, what choice it might make for you. Humans are still, you know, better than computers. I don't know, I'm scared. I've, I've watched Black Mirror too many times and it shows. On June 4th, 1996, Europe's Orion 5 rocket launched successfully, but 30 seconds into the flight, the rocket flipped 90 degrees out of nowhere and the onboard computer triggered the self-destruct mechanism just two seconds later, that fast. It just made that call automatically. Instead of a launch where a human would make a call to, you know, maybe self-destruct, this is just the computer making that call. It's not very ideal, that's, that's terrifying. This rocket knew it was going too fast and it just dipped. The investigation revealed that some sort of old code wasn't properly adapted for the new Ariane 5. Old code for the four, into new body equals problems, yeah. In this case, the engineers had decided the specific velocity in question was too high to become a real problem. That was only true for the Ariane 4, so you'll live and you'll learn. Number seven, 2001 Genesis. I've personally never been skydiving before and I don't think I could ever. My friends are talking about it right now and I'm very quiet in that group chat, you know what I mean? I'm absent. Because I'm so worried about the parachute not working. I mean, that's obvious, but it's a very real problem. And one we'll sometimes see in NASA projects. So, you know, sometimes it goes to shit, even when it's NASA. NASA's Genesis spacecraft launched in 2001, but it's 2004 when it later faced issues. See, when the solar wind sample carrying probe was descended back into our home base, the parachute never deployed. It just crashed down. Remaining samples were all contaminated by the desert air. Other samples were just destroyed on impact Obviously, it was a huge mess. NASA's failure report later on in 2009 revealed that manufacturers had incorrectly installed the probe's accelerometers into an inverted position. So the spacecraft thought it was going up when really it was going down. That's a big yikes, that's a big smash. It took five years to get answers, so I'm sure the parachute industry was low for five years because they're like, uh, what happened over there? Number six, Apollo 1. The first fatal accident in the history of US spaceflight. Here we go. It was January 27, 1967. The first manned mission of the Apollo space program. During a simulated launch, a simulated one, a fire broke out in the command module of Apollo 204 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, ultimately and sadly taking the lives of astronaut Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger 
Dodger Cafe. Design flaws in the hatch door made it impossible to open in time to save the astronauts. It was a tragedy. Apollo 13 faced issues as well in 1970 when an oxygen tank failed. The crew was supposed to head to the moon, but had to obviously return once they were faced with these impossible tasks. But they still got home, so we'll talk about that later. Number five, Mariner 1. July 22nd, 1962, an Atlas rocket launch was successful. Now, at first, NASA's Mariner 1 spacecraft had hoped to be the first to fly by Venus and get ahead of the Soviet Union in the, you know, the big bad space race, right? Everyone wanted to be the first to launch and leave for some reason. After launch, it didn't take long for operations to go south. The rocket was unable to steer itself and it was heading towards a crash rather than, you know, the cosmos. There's two things that could happen here. The rocket either lands into North Atlantic shipping lanes or it lands in into inhabited areas, which is a no-go. It's kind of a lose-lose. There's no choice other than to self-destruct. Now, humans made this call a little bit better than a computer just deciding to blow up, but humans made the $720 million decision and it came splashing down minutes later. Turns out this was all caused because one programmer left a hyphen out of an equation. Yeah, a little hyphen. I forget commas here all the time, but you know, no tragedy ensues. Number four, the second shortest spacewalk. Luca Parmitano, an Italian astronaut with the European Space Agency, faced what's possibly my new worst fear. I don't know, this is like a premise of a horror movie. This is terrible. It was July 16th, 2013. During a spacewalk on the 36th expedition to the ISS, Luca's helmet began to fill with liquid. Not even water, but it was liquid coolant, so you can't even drink it, worst case Ontario. Water would be bad, coolant, that's... That's just a nightmare. That's, a, that's double the nightmare now. But being in space, that's a bit, you know, that's triple the nightmare. It's no gravity, it's flying around. The spacewalk actually continued for an hour before Luca was able to get back into the ISS and actually free of his suit of doom. He was fine, but this accident could have been a lot, a lot worse. The second shortest spacewalk in the station's history. Yeah, more than fair. I would have tried to have been the first. That's so scary. What have nightmares about that. Number three, Phobos 1. It was 1998, and we'll look over to the Soviet Union for this one. Back in 98, they launched the Phobos 1 spacecraft to study Mars' moons and even possibly land a probe on Phobos, the largest moon of them all. On September 2nd, 1998, mission operators lost contact with the spacecraft and they never heard back after. Yeah, just ghosted them and then drifted away in space. How rude, right? So what went wrong? What went awry, if I may? Well, software uploaded on August 29th, well, it turns out somebody missed a single character. Again, a little tiny error caused a the biggest problem. This put the spacecraft into a steering test mode for some reason, which also deactivated the spacecraft's thrusters, so eventually it ran out of battery power and communication, and now it's just floating off into nothing. It just doesn't even do anything. Number two, space workout gone wrong. Again, another new fear, I guess. Look, zero gravity, I can't imagine how hard it is to stay in shape while you're floating on the ISS. It's always funny to watch astronauts return, you know, they're all like sea legs, because they haven't been able to do a squat in so long. They haven't needed to actually bend over to do anything. No gravity. But it's vital for that return trip later that they're, you know, in shape. So they work out in zero gravity, but it has its dangers. In 1995, astronaut Norman Thagard was working out, getting his lunar leg Day in doing some knee bends, but while doing so, one of the straps snapped off his foot and flew upwards, hitting him right in the eye. Gravity or not, that's gonna suck. That's gonna leave a mark. Thagard had trouble looking at light from that point on, which when you're in space and you're an astronaut is really not ideal. Steroid eye drops healed Thagard's eye ultimately, but yeah, could have been a lot worse. Imagine losing an eye in space. You know who lost an eye in space? Thor. It's pretty bad. And finally, number one, the Challenger disaster. There's a series on Netflix about this entire situation I implore you to watch. It's hard to watch, but way more informative than I can be in, you know, 45 seconds. On January 28th, 1986, barely a minute after the space shuttle lifted off, a malfunction in the spacecraft rubber seals that separates its rocket boosters, it caused a fire. And from that point on, everything happened so fast. The blaze spread up the rocket itself, and the disaster sadly led to the deaths of all the astronauts on board, including a teacher, Krista McAuliffe. Now, with it being minus three degrees Celsius, Celsius outside, the engineering predicted some sort of failure, but NASA had already delayed this launch multiple times, so they wanted to press on and launch anyways. The disaster resulted in the temporary suspension of the space shuttle program, so let's hope we learned some things. Again, watch the Netflix series, much more informative than I can be in this video. Those are the top 10 historical space accidents that shocked the world. If you want a part two, comment down below. We'll go, uh, we've got some history, medieval times, and now we're going to space. Let's do it. Let's mix it up. I'm Taylor McWaters. You're you. Keep being you. We'll see you next time. See ya.